Hi, my name is Lillian Campbell. I am an LMFT, licensed marriage and family therapist and a board certified behavior analyst, BCBA. I'm uh, one of the CEOs of ABA Works, which is an uh, ABA agency in the United States, LA, and ABA Courses. Um, ABA Courses is a site that offers online coursework in ABA. We also have agencies here in Holland, Aspire, um, which is a European uh, division, and then also ABA Center International. We provide social skills, but also do a lot of ABA one-on-one -on -one work with individuals in the home setting and in the community. So over the past 20 years, I've been very motivated to work in uh, the area of ABA and working on behavior in different ways. A couple of years ago, I came in touch with uh, QT and was very intrigued by how to teach through uh, QT to robots uh, to the learners as this was something new and I haven't been working with that yet. Um, one of um, the curriculums that we thought about and I actually developed was the social skills curriculum for QT. A lot of times behavior technicians and BCBAs report to me that one of the most difficult skills to teach a learner is social skills. And that's due to various reasons. Often there's no peers being available, but also uh, it, 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 and there's, it's difficult to work with an adult and train the, the social skills to the uh, learner. Um, in addition to that, the learners are often not motivated so much to learn, to share, to have eye contact. Um, therefore, we often see pretty low scores as we report data in ABA. So we see low scores in the area of social skills. And sometimes we actually don't see scores at all because it cannot be practiced. So we, um, we were able uh, about a year ago to try out uh, QT uh, and that was one of the first times we did. And there was one client who has a lot of difficulty with joint attention. So the, the, the learner is not really interested in sharing social experiences, doesn't really look around him. Um, we did a couple of trial sessions with the client and then we took him outside. And this was the first time we observed him really being, look, really looking around in the environment and just observing the environment. Uh, the, the BCBA was working with the client was very enthusiastic. This was, was the first time we saw that behavior. In addition, I also saw various trials being conducted with uh, QT and learners. And I saw how interested and engaged the learners were compared to when an adult was sitting across the table from them. So this was really one of, uh, these were really one of the motivations for me to uh, start working on the social skills curriculum so we can really start teaching social skills through QT all over the world. Um, also what I uh, found very intriguing is uh, we came in touch also in America with families to have help for uh, their children and they just don't have specialists in the area. Um, so through uh, the help of QT, we can also really work in remote areas and still have uh, a really good curriculum being taught to learners who need that. Now, I, um, I've been in the past 20 years very driven in the world of ABA and also that's something that was my motivation to develop a curriculum based on ABA. So I use the strategies that we use in ABA to develop the curriculum. For example, if the learner is making an error, we use error correction which is one of the uh, uh, protocols um, that really helps to correct the error without repeating it all over constantly. We use prompting procedures uh, from ABA, uh, reinforcement procedures, like variable reinforcement. We also use reinforcement thinning, as it's really important to decrease the uh, reinforcement uh, once a learner is developing skills. We use prompt fading, but also built on skills. The sessions are structured that it really starts from the basic to the more advanced. So for example, maybe in the first phase or the first level, the learner is learning really the basics uh, for greeting and interaction. But once it goes through all the modules, it will learn more advanced skills in greeting, reciprocal conversation um, and um, sharing and things like that. Now we, I, I really focus on a, um, population from the age of two to 60 years old, multicultural, uh, but also learners who are not just with diagnosis of AD, um, uh, autism spectrum disorder, but it could also be developmental delays, ADHD, uh, or even without a diagnosis, because um, also people without a diagnosis may have difficulties with social skills. 
It is important that the learner is verbal, as most of the teachings are uh, requiring a verbal response. Um, now, uh, we don't advise the curriculum for learners who are impaired uh, hearing or visual uh, impaired, or who may be very aggressive towards materials, since we want to preserve acuity, of course. Now, you can use the modules in different ways, and ABA always emphasizes every learner is different, so we always make sure that everything is individualized. Uh, we do advise that typically the uh, adult that is um, a part of the curriculum and teaching it together with QT is either trained in ABA or maybe has learned the basics in ABA. And that can be anyone, uh, of course, it can be a, a BCBA, a behavior technician, it can be a parent, caregiver, uh, social work, etc. And we advise to, um, to not do like 10 curriculums or 10 modules in one day. For example, if you're teaching one curriculum uh, or one module in the morning, you can do it again in the afternoon and one time in the evening, as long as it, the learner is motivated. And motivation is really key, because with the motivation, um, you can continue to work more on uh, different modules. Um, it's really important to reach a level of 80% or more uh, mastery. This helps to ensure that the skills are being maintained. So for example, if you're teaching in the morning and the learner is maybe getting 60%, repeat it again and again and maybe spread it out over days until the learner gets 80 percent three times and then you go to the next so when the learner masters one module we advise to go to the next and then to the to the next we generally don't advise to skip modules however since it is individual you can tailor it individually it is possible to skip certain levels or modules uh, even more so if you already know that the learner knows it important uh, when you get started with QT it's really important to first have the learner uh, be ready to keep the hands away from QT but also to uh, focus in a functional way on the tablets and not using it for scrolling going to other apps which are which are blocked but uh, some of the uh, learners may have the tendency so you may before you start with the first module first work on those behaviors like um, how to keep the hands away uh, from QT and how to work functionally with the tablet um, and uh, then you can actually get started and you can get started maybe with an easier skill um, so they actually feel successful before you go to a little more difficult skill. Thank you for listening.